Parksville Salvation Army Ministry Unit Life Service. We've had a very pretty intensive time today, this morning, practicing. Some songs to you will be new, but those, I know Mark is very happy about those new songs. Right, Mark? <laughs> I just wanted to direct your attention to Isaiah chapter 40. I, I was, I started uh, the time of our service last week with Isaiah 40 and I would like to continue. It's absolutely powerful, powerful, amazing book and chapter 40 is absolutely important. It starts with the words comfort, comfort my people. And I will continue today with different section of this chapter. Chapter 9, you who bring good news to Zion. I know there are some people here who are we have heart for Israel, for Zion, for Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this word is directed to you. And to those maybe who are wondering what is it about, I would recommend you open your mind and let your mind to be renewed and transformed by the marvelous, powerful word of God. You who bring good news to Zion, says God to you, go up on a high mountain. And then he repeats again. If he says twice something, it is very important. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. And you know what is going on today in the world. There's so many people have you know, hatred toward Jewish people. And there are so many false accusations and manipulation with media. Do not trust media. Media is extremely corrupted. Do not trust media. Lift up your voice with a shout. Lift up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand or with the breadth of his hand marked of the heavens? Who has held the dust of the earth in a, bas in a basket or weighed the mountains on the scales and the hills in a balance? Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord or instruct the Lord as his counselor? Who did the Lord counsel to enlighten him and who taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge or showed him the path of understanding? Those words speak about how great and awesome the Lord God is. It is absolutely not impossible to comprehend Him in fullness of our capacity. He much beyond our capacity, but He comes down to us every time because He is loving, caring, sensitive Father. And He reveals what amazes me all the time. He reveals Himself in an absolutely unique way to every one of us. He knows how to speak to us. I will learn a little bit Greek, so I, I remember Greek greeting now, and I use that 
greeting Maria, but he knows everyone's language and he speaks very gently and sensitively to every one of us. Is it not awesome? It's absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Come in, come in. <laughs> Father God, we are amazed, absolutely amazed how great and mighty you are and at the same time how sensitive and open you are to every one of us to speak in unique language which is understandable to us, to be attentive to every small detail of our character, of our reality. And we are, when we are impatient, when we are distracted by the haste of this world, you are so patient, you are so wise, and you know the right time when to speak to us, how to speak to us. And you just break all those walls of anger and frustration and doubts and fears. We glorify your holy name. We invite you to be with us today. And we, we do come to the high mountain, come close to you. Hallelujah. I will invite our sisters. May God bless our brother Colin and Mania, wherever they are. Yeah. They have day off today. So we will load you with different songs and different voices. <laughs> and we will invite you to participate with us. Please. So the first one comes from, again, book of Isaiah. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. There, there, there will be day when nations will proclaim that loudly. And to the house of the God of Jacob. Amen? Amen. Let us go up.
his word will change. God is amazing, amazing. He's a master of the universe and he knows every proof, every deepest proof in our soul. And he knows how to fix things in a gentle way, in a loving way.
Thank you all for helping today. I heard a wonderful choir. <laughs> uh, and right now we would like to intercede for our precious brothers and sisters who are suffering. And uh, before we start doing it, think about God himself because more close we approach to God Almighty, more close we stay with Him, more He will be able to hear us what we are interceding for, and faster He will respond. And right now, as we are united by His Spirit, I just ask you to stay focused on Lord Almighty first, right? Turn, turn on your heart line up with his will 
and then we let us unite in prayer of interceding. Lord God Almighty, we come to you this morning and we pray for our precious brothers and sisters and family members. We lift up before you Dorothy, Luke, Cyril, Major Bob, Greg. Just Lord be with them, intervene, intervene the situation and uh, show your mighty power and glory because our temples are to, to glorify your holy name. May your holy name will be glorified in all our bodies. Lord, we lift up before you, Mark, and we bless your holy name for his marvelous, miraculous healing and restoration. And may you inspire him more and more. May he sound joyfully during the worship service, Lord God. Give him vigor and your strength. We pray for Gail, who is still expecting her uh, meeting with the doctors, and we pray about marvelous power of God to yes. touch you right now, Lord God. Right now, we we rely, we don't rely on a medical system anymore because you are Lord, our physician, our healer, and you are our priority to intercede. Lord, we bless your holy name, and we bless your holy name for Brenda. We see her today. Lord, thank you. And we lift up before you our young people, Elena, John, Thomas, Derek, Emma, Greg, Tina, and the baby, Ravija and Ravisha, Leah, and Daniel's family, Lord God. We pray for all young people, for Igor's family, as they uh, enter a new stage of life. Nazara is approaching the college time, Lord Jesus, and we pray about your wisdom, guidance, your, your lead, Lord God, in our lives. Lord Jesus, we pray about all nations who are now suffering all around the world. We pray about prisoners of war, Lord Jesus, political prisoners all around the world, people who fought for your freedom and ended up in jail, who fought for your justice and have been killed. We pray for their relatives, Lord God. We pray for the land of Jerusalem and for Israel, Lord God. We pray for the land of Palestine and for people who live on this land. We pray for Ukraine, Russia, and all African countries which struggle with war conflict, Lord God. We just ask for your presence, uh, for the move of your spirit to touch the hearts of politicians and to touch the hearts of people in authority. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, move, move, move through your spirit and bring peace to this world. May your holy word will be proclaimed all over the earth. In your holy name, Jesus, we are praying. Amen. Amen. And now, please join me in saying Lord's Prayer together. You may stand if you wish. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, if we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now I will share with you you may be seated thank you and now i will share with you about some news from our church life and on monday each monday we have a prayer time it's in our office if you have time 9 15 we are meeting at the church please join us and september the 10th we are starting our weekly bible studies with tom and carol hutchinson and it will be six weeks of wonderful teaching it's on the armor of god please feel free to join on tuesdays 10 a.m very powerful bible study and next slide please 
Next Sunday we are serving church potluck, so come prepare it. Yeah. Come enjoy the time of fellowship yeah. of the, the, the church service. And next slide, please. Music talents. <laughs> we are still looking for music talents on the fourth and fifth Sunday of each month. Singers, guitar players, drum players, piano players. So please join us. Don't hesitate. Don't think about your age. As I told you, one lady in Nanaima, she just started at 76 to learn bass guitar. And she joined the worship team with young people. So please feel free to join us. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, we are still looking at uh, the position, paid position, are available. So food bank volunteer drivers to pick up food donations from the stores. That's temporary position. And uh, 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 will end up on March 31st, 2025. And we are looking for casual help with soup kitchen. So please feel free, if you know some people, invite them to apply. Next slide, please. And this Wednesday, 2 p.m. in Red River Park, we are inviting all volunteers. This includes all church volunteers who are helpful in many areas. Please join us in Red River Park at 2 p.m. We will find you. Just park on the main lot and we will find you. And it will be a fun time and few snacks will be <laughs> to enjoy your time. So a fun time of fellowship. Not Nothing. Not too many snacks. Ah, no, no, ju just snacks like sandwiches will be served and water will be served as well. So just simply come. <laughs> come, okay? And next slide, please. And on September 15th, you can watch on TV, every year Salvation Army enrolls new ministers for two years study program, and it will be a special service, welcome meeting for new cadets. It's on September 15th at 4 p.m. Eastern time, but you can watch online through salvationist.ca. That's all our news for today, <coughs> and I'm inviting Major Sergei. <laughs> Today is our final part. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Do you know that the joy of the Lord is your strength? Yes. yes. Do you know that deeply? Very deeply. Yes. Do you know that in your second brain, your second brain here, do you know that your second, you have two brains. <laughs> one brain is here, another one brain is here in the guts area. Seriously. Yes. Scientists prove that. Yeah, so God wants for this joy to penetrate, his joy to penetrate all of our physical being. And all that darkness will be cast away by this joy, because joy is a great and mighty power. And it is giving to us to cast all those fears, doubts, frustrations. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Today is part five, the last one. It does not mean that I finish with this topic. It is impossible to comprehend all what God speaks about his joy in the scripture. We just get some glimpses of his wisdom and his insight in regard to the joy from the scripture. So next slide, please. Next slide, again, I want to remind you that my brain and your brain is under construction. And this construction project is absolutely amazing because the master of this construction pro project is God Almighty, El Elyon, Most High God. He is a master of this project, and he says in his word in Book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2, so please bring your brain with you. See, this gentleman brings his brain to the service. Do not forget your brain when you come to the services, because God wants to transform your brain yes. by his power, including his joy. Be transformed, he says, by the renewing of your mind. At least you have to bring it here. Do not leave it at home. Next slide, please. 
Next slide. Next slide, I just will bring to you a short illustration about one man, we don't know his name, he lived in the third century, third century. And if you know a little bit history of the Bible, how Bible was compiled, Bible was finalized as a compilation of books up to the fifth century. So third century, it was in the middle of, in, in originally the Bible's books were circulated as letters among churches in different parts of the world. And then finally it was compiled. But in the third century, the history, the story is known about the man who was anticipating death. We don't know the reason what caused the death to come to him, but he penned these last words to a friend. It is a bad world, an incredibly bad world. But I have discovered in the midst of it a quiet and holy people who have learned a great secret. They have found a joy which is thousand times better than any pleasure of our sinful life. They are despised and persecuted, but they care not. So joy of the Lord helps us when we are under pressure of persecution, trials, misunderstandings, accusations. Joy of the Lord helps us to overcome it. They are masters of their souls. They have overcome the world. These people are the Christians, and I am one of them. I think this man, before his death, he witnessed to his friend about great joy what he's got from the Lord God, and great power with it that he overcame the world in spite of the circumstances. In the first book of John, chapter 5, 4, we read, for whatever is born of God, whatever is born of God, overcomes the world, overcomes any powers in this world, overcomes any circumstances in this world, overcomes any forces of this world, any schemes, deception, you know. And the, uh, there, there is no doubt the world is absolutely beautiful because the world has been created by God himself. And human people, humans are beautiful people, but by the arrogance, by the short-sightedness, by the rebellion, they, at times they become, it's hard even to call them humans, they becoming beasts. And they pervert reality around them, especially when they are in authority. Can you imagine how big damage any pervert might do if he is in authority? So pray. Pray for your leaders, for my leaders, for your leaders. Pray for the leaders. Yes. Let them be supported by God's power of love and transformation. And may the joy of the Lord will be their strength, not schemes of humans, Amen. but the joy of the Lord be their strength. Amen? So, and this is the victory, says John in his letter. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Our faith which is given to us. And what faith is? Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Can you imagine? You hope for something and it becomes material. You can smell it. You can touch it. You can see it. And evidence of things that are unseen. So faith basically a huge power which transforms invisible into visible non-material into material. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide, we will read some verses from another letter, which has been sent by another apostle. His name was Peter or Kepha. Inexpressible and glorious joy, that's what he wrote about. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, we read, First of all, Peter introduces himself. He says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And who is an apostle? Apostle means someone who has been sent by Jesus Christ. Someone who has been determined and appointed by Jesus Christ for certain mission, for certain actions. If God appoints you for something, he empowers you. 
He gives to you power to accomplish. He never sends you or me without empowering. He never sends us without equipping us first. Yes. So do not be hesitant. If you do something, trust God. God will equip you. He will empower you. He will support you. He will help you to reach desire, desired result by Him. He desires for you to get a result. You will reach that result. Don't worry. To God's now, he, he shows to whom this letter was addressed. To God's elect exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontius, Galatia, and Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Many of those provinces is modern Turkey, Turkey today. So what I want to tell you, he addresses these people to God's elect, yet they are exiles. They are elect, but they are exiles. They are exiles among people, but they are elected by God. So their royalty did not prevent them to be rejected by humans. So when people do not understand you, when they offend you, when they reject of what you are saying to them, it does not mean that you lost your royalty of election. And, and then he adds more about those people who have been chosen according to the foreign knowledge of God the Father. So we are chosen. We are sitting here not because we are smarter than anyone else. We simply are chosen by the foreign knowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. See how deep theology here. Spirit, who Spirit is? Do you remember? Every time when we say the, the Spirit, what, what do we mean? We mean specific name of the Lord God. Holy One of Israel. Please say with me. Holy One of Israel. Every time when you read in the Bible about the Spirit of God, you really read about the presence of the Holy One of Israel, who is the Father of Jesus. If Holy One would ever have human passport, in his passport will be written, Holy One of Israel. Or if Jesus will show to you birth certificate, in, in this certificate you will see that his Father is the Holy One of Israel. So, and Peter says that Holy One of Israel sanctified us. What does it mean? It means that he took us apart for certain mission, for certain work, for certain task. And also, Peter adds here that he, God, has chosen us to be obedient to Jesus Christ. So the reason why he chose us, not only to bring good news to people, but also to be, which is very important, to be obedient to Jesus Christ. And to be obedient to, to Jesus Christ means that we have to be in tight connection with him. How can you be obedient to Jesus Christ if you have no idea what he requires of you to do? Yes, amen. And also he adds that we have been chosen and also sprinkled with his blood. Why have we been sprinkled by his blood? For what purpose? For cleansing yes. and also for redemption. For redemption. Without shedding of the blood, there is no redemption. What redemption means? Redemption means that you and me, we have been bought by Jesus Christ from satanic slavery, from satanic kingdom. We do not belong anymore to Satan, to no. devil, because it was paid, there was price paid for you and me by Jesus Christ himself, and that price is absolutely high. It's actually the most high price which ever had been paid in the universe. And it was paid for us, for you and me. So we belong to Jesus legally, legally. This is very important. I don't care if Christians do not like the word legalists or legalism, but spiritual world is a world of legalism. Yes. Spiritual world is very strictly ordained, established, and directed. 
And if we have been purchased by Jesus, it means that demons have no authority over us. Yes. That's what means to be sprinkled. That's what means to be... Isn't it, isn't it joyful message? Hallelujah! We overpowered not only world, we overpowered by the blood of Jesus Christ, we overpowered all schemes of Satan, all his soldiers and his generals. They have no authority over us. What I mean when fear comes to you, tell him, I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Get away from me, spirit of fear. Get away from me. And he will obey. He has, he has no child choice. He should obey. He must obey to you because you are a child of God. And you are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Satan knows that. By the way, by the way, when Satan looks at people, he sees that blood. Do you know that spirits? You, you can lie to people, but you would not lie to demons. They will recognize of who you are. If you are a fake Christian, they will tell you to your face. Once I came with my friend, a demonized woman. I'll tell you a scary story. This woman terrorized the whole building. A young woman, she went naked with a rose in her hand silently to the last floor and down. Nobody. People were afraid even to leave their apartments. That's how terrified they were. So, and we came to pray for this woman because she has had two children. We came to pray. She actually locked her children in an apartment, did not allow them even to come out. We were worried if they are hungry or something. So we, we knocked to the door and she opened the door and she looked at us and demons started telling very intimate things about my friend. And my friend was scared, terrified. He was a believer and he ran away. Demons know who you are. They, if you are a fake Christian, they will tell you straight to your face. But if you are not, if you are a true Christian, if you are a true child of God, and they see the blood of Christ, Jesus Christ on you, and they are able to see that, they will respect the blood of Christ because they have no choice. They are legalists, and they are main master, king of the kings, Lord of lords, Jesus. And they see his blood on you. And you are protected by it. And great power is given to you by it. And great privilege is given to you by it. Never forget that you are a child of a royal king, great master of the universe. And then Peter says, grace and peace be yours in abundance. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So God gave to you and me new birth into a living hope, which means endless hope. Not dead hope. Hope into money is dead hope. Hope into education is dead hope. Hope in other people is deadly dangerous hope, but hope in Jesus is ever living, eternal hope. Why? Because Jesus has been risen from the dead. Through his resurrection, hope, again, I will tell you that again, hope is empowered by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, eternally, ever alive. Verse 4, and, and also we were sent into an inheritance, an inheritance has been given to us that can never perish, spoil or fade, eternal inheritance. Every inheritance on this earth will be spoiled, fade, you know, and vanish, but his inheritance is non-destroyable, eternal inheritance. Who? This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready 
to be revealed in the last time. You know what is funny? Peter was complaining about Peter. Oh, <clears throat> Peter always wrote so long, long, long sentences when you are lost in the middle of sentences. But here, when I read Peter, it's endless sentences. More and more and more and more and more. So when you read those sentences of Peter, Peter actually had, hadn't been known by those long sentences, but Paul is. Paul was very smart, highly educated. So when you read his letters, you have to chop it. Boom, boom. On, you know, when you eat big watermelon, you have to chop it. You have to yeah. make it with big pieces. So do not eat, the, do not swallow the whole watermelon. It's too much. Yes. So chop it on small portions and get it portion by portion by portion. And then you will understand what Paul meant or what even Peter meant here. So what he meant here that through faith, by our faith, we are shielded by God's power. Shielded from what? From Satan, from his attacks. Yeah. Until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice. Yes. Thou now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. So what Peter says, greatly rejoice even you struggling temporarily now. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So long, long sentence, very rich with, with the meaning. But what Peter says, your faith and my faith should be genuine, real, sincere. And if it does have this sincerity, then it's greater than gold. Greater than gold. And it will result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So when Jesus Christ will come, he will look at us and he, he knows. He knows perfectly whose faith is genuine and whose faith is fake. One. Verse 8, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you have not seen him, you love him. You know, when I was a teenager, nobody taught me. I never read the Bible. I never opened it. Yet. I don't know when Jesus entered into my life. Somehow he entered my life and I was th thinking about him. How great this man should be if he died for other people. Mm -hmm. And I sneaked into the churches. It was prohibited in my country to go official in churches. So I sneaked quietly in churches and I looked at huge icons just to see what Jesus has done because I never read anything about him. But somehow his figure just magnetized me. Yeah. And don't worry when your children go to school or your grandchildren go to school. S spend time with them. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about his love. Do not worry if, if they are, you know, brainwashed in schools. I have been brainwashed heavily, heavily. They bombarded us that I used to have a tail. My grandparents had a tail. I never believed in that, but they bombarded. Did they bombard you in the school? That we derived from monkeys. Do not be afraid. Just spend time with your grandchildren. Spend time with your children. Let them know that God loves them and they... They did not come from monkeys. <laughs> I mean, monkeys are beautiful creatures. Nothing wrong is about monkeys. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. You know, yesterday I read in some commentaries that joy is a feeling. Joy of the Lord? Yes. Joy of the Lord covers our areas of feelings. Absolutely. It covers our emotional part, which means that joy of the Lord touches our souls. But joy of the Lord is much more than just feelings or emotions. Yes. According to Peter, it is inexpressible by humans. Mm -hmm. And glory. So his joy is emanation of his glory. His joy is a part of his glory. You know, God has special name. Adon Ha Kavod. Adon Ha Kavod. It means that 
his arguments. You know that God's glory it is not only about shiny, not only about bright, sparkly, no. He considers his glory as most valuable and weighty argument in eternity. What he says is absolutely most valuable, most serious, and most objective and most helpful to us. Nothing can compare with what he with his standards. So his standards is also emanation of his glory. His precepts are emanation of his glory. His commandments is reveal revelation of his glory to us because they are absolutely powerful and establish our being, our existence. Not only our existence, the whole universe is established by his commandments and by his statutes and standards. For concluding, Peter, this tough, tough section, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. It's the salvation of your souls. Next slide. Next slide is a little bit more colorful. Do you like when you have those colorful pictures? Yeah. Let's start from the left one. The Lord is my strength and my shield. The Lord, say it, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. He helps me. My heart leaps of joy. And with my song, I praise him. You actually have been so powerful with, as a choir. The compilation of your voice was very powerful. I think God was, has been pleased. I think he danced, you know. Book of, uh, Bible says that when God is pleased and happy, he dances. He dances above us. And the next one also speaks about the Lord is my strength in the middle. The Lord is my strength and my song. So he's not only your shield, he's also your song. And he has become my salvation. And then there, there is a girl in yellow boots. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Why do we sow in tears? Because we have resistance. We have misunderstanding. We, we deal with rebellious generation. But we should not lose our heart. That's what God wants to tell us. He wants to tell us, joy will come. Don't worry. Do what you're supposed to do. Do not lose your heart. Do not lose your you know, sense of, of your importance. Because you are my child. Just keep doing what you're doing. And I am responsible for bringing joy to you. You shall reap in joy. Maybe it, maybe it wouldn't us. Maybe it would not be us. Maybe it would be other people who will reap what we've been, what been, have been sown by us. But we all are harvesters. We all are laborers, and the field is Lord's. Right? It belongs to Him. So every human being belongs to Him. And then we go to the low row. No one will take your joy away from you, said Jesus. No one will take your joy away from you. You know what it means? When, when Jesus says your joy, he means that we have personal, supernatural joy of the Lord in us, intimate joy. And then great commandment comes from book of Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Be joyful in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be faithful in prayer. Mm -hmm. Joyful, patient, faithful. Hope, affliction, prayer. Have you noticed that affliction is included with hope and with a prayer? Have you noticed that? Do you like afflictions? I do not like afflictions. But do you see in this verse that affliction is included together with hope and prayer? Why? Affliction is necessary for us.
works. Affliction makes us to be grown and mature. Yes. It's kind of training. Yes. Training. Without affliction, we would not be grown. We would be never grown babies. No, I'm tired of training. Yes. <laughs> me too. Me too. You know, I've spent 15 years in the military. 15 years. I never liked military. God knew that it was enough for me 15 years. <laughs> Praise God that it was just 15 years, not 30. So we all have our own boot camp. <laughs> and by the way, I believe that every child in Canada and every other country should pass through the boot camp. Child, child, in a good sense, every child should be broken, in good sense. Because if our will has never been broken, we, we might become beasts. Mm -hmm. When humans are not restricted, not disciplined, mm -hmm. they become beasts. They, they transform into beastly mm -hmm. nature. Even, even, you know, even predators in the nature, they are still restricted. They are disciplined by their moms. But only humans are not disciplined enough. And if you look inside of every dictator, they have not been disciplined properly. Yeah. Properly, I mean. Some of them have been beaten, sexually molested, put down, but never been disciplined properly with love. And as a result, we reap huge damage in nations, in nations. Next slide, please. This is last one, last one. Comes from Psalm 51, verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Restore to me. This, very, this is very wise prayer. God is able to restore the joy. Some of us might lose this joy by the wrong focus by the focus on earthly things. There are so many people who have been damned. There are so many Christians who are in, in doubts now because of the wars. You know, when you get into the war, you see killing of people, uh, of children. You know, I was asking why? Who could, who could push this button and send a rocket into the child, huge children's hospital? I've been in that hospital. Children in this hospital suffering because of cancer. Hundreds of them suffering, yet someone pushes the button and sends the rocket into that hospital. I cannot comprehend it. No. It's beyond my comprehension. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter how you've been trained, but there, there are limits. Yet humans break any limits, any barriers. And that is why we read here, restore to me the joy of your salvation. And make me, I like this one, and make me willing Make me willing. So something in me, that, you know, I call my body. My body is a temple of the Holy One. My body is a member of Christ. But in some sense, my body sometimes acts like a donkey. <laughs> yeah, I have to feed this donkey. I have to deal graciously with this donkey and wisely. Because if you would not deal with your donkey graciously and wisely, <laughs> Your donkey will, will not obey you. <laughs> right? Do not give too much chocolate to this donkey. Just give him grass, vegetables. You know, do not take too much fruits. Make me. Make me. Our Lord God is a maker of heaven and earth. But he is also our maker. Mm -hmm. And you know, there is this verb to make. To make. When you will read the book of Genesis, there are several stages. Several stages. First, God created a soul. Then he made a man. Shaped, made. So the verb make speaks about our carnality. And that is why the author of this psalm says, make me willing. And will, what will is? Will is a part of my soul. My will, my... I can tell you, every one of us, please do not be offended on me, but every one of us has been corrupted in our will. You know why? 
because we've had earthly parents, our parents haven't been perfect. We've had surrounding around us in schools, in, kin in kindergarten, you know, and all that reality around us affected our will into the corruption mode. That is why Psalm says, make me, means fix, repair my will, remove the iniquity. You know what iniquity is? Iniquity when you know that it is wrong, yet you stubbornly do that. That's what iniquity. You know that too much coffee is destructive to you, yet you take bigger and bigger cups and you <laughs> drink it. That's iniquity. Because you know that it is destructive to you and your body is a temple of Holy One. Yes. Amen. But you and me and you, we, we know, we, all, we have those hooks, right? Mm -hmm. Those hooks. And Satan also knows those hooks. That is why Psalmist says, make me invisible to those hooks. Make me invincible to those hooks. Which means, repair my will to obey you. There is only one way to escape destruction, to obey Jesus. Yes. That is why when Jesus raised up paralyzed man, do you remember he was paralyzed with his stinky bed? I showed you many times. I will show you again because it is very important. What Jesus said to this man, take your stinky, smelly, ugly bed with you and walk. Imagine, this is Jesus. That's what Jesus said to him. And walk around me. That's what he literally said to this man. Why he said, take this bed with you? Because the smell will remind to this man where he came from. Now, imagine, this man comes to his relatives, knocking to the door, and they open the door and they see that he takes this <laughs> mat, smelly mat with him. <laughs> and he says, may I come in? You may come in, but do not bring this garbage with you. No, 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 I cannot. <laughs> I just, I shall come with this junk with, <laughs> at your house. So what it means to us when we deal with each other, very often we see this st stinky, smelly mat of that person. Sometimes this person is, you know, surrounded with this mat. And this smell irritates us, makes us, you know, not willing to relate to that person, to communicate even with that person. But that's not what Jesus says to us. He says, be patient, be patient. If someone smells bad, it does not mean that you have rejected him. Make me, make me willing to obey you. So what spirit now really, what spirit of the Holy One really now says to you and to me? He wants to focus us onto our will what I will do and what I would not. What I want and what I do not want. And why I do not want. So examine yourself, examine yourself. Where is a stumbling block? Where is a stumbling block? And a stumbling block basically does not allow you to follow Jesus, to be obedient to him. That's what, that, that is why Satan Satan knows those hooks and he uses those hooks to prevent us from following Jesus. And sometimes Jesus sits and patiently waits because he knows that he, if he would not wait, he just loses us. There are so many examples. Do you remember when Jesus spoke to the, to the rich young man? Rich young man, he was very well educated, religiously and non-religiously. He was rich. The only thing was, the main hindrance in his life was that he was too much attached to his possessions, to his earthly inheritance. Yeah. 
And that's what separated him from, from being obedient and to be Jesus' follower. There are many other reasons, many other reasons. Wrong focus, wrong focus is another one. So let us pray. Do you struggle when we come to the joy, to the factor of joy? Do you struggle with it? Do you want to have more joy yes. of the Lord in your life? I want. Mm -hmm. You know what it means? It means that we have to be restored to the joy of the Lord. It means that something in us is resistant or we neglect or we ignore acceptance of that joy. So you can tell God even now, Father God, in Jesus' name, I deny every neglect, every resistance, every diminishing of your joy as the most important and valuable treasure in my life. I open myself. I open my mind, I open my heart, and accept the abundance of your joy. Because according to your word, it is my strength. I would like to be empowered by it. And also, Father God, I ask you, please reshape, remold, Repair my will to be in tune with your move, Jesus Christ. To be obedient to you and to follow you wherever you go. In your precious name, Jesus, I am praying. Amen.
microphone to my brother Gary. He wanted to share about something with you. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, my wife and I, we were down in the Philippines uh, years ago, and we went with uh, Seed Care International out of Vancouver, and we stayed with pastors, and uh, we went to this uh, pastor's place, and uh, his wife had a testimony about she had a job, a good job in the bank. She uh, was going to Methodist Church. She thought she was a good person, and she got sick, and she wound up in the hospital. And in the hospital, she said she saw demons all around her, jumping up and down. She's dead, she's dead, she's dead. And she went down into the pit. And she saw down there the torment and the suffering and the fire down in hell there. And she was so uh, uh, afraid, like never before, no fear on earth could match. And she said the heat down there and the stink and people were crying out in the fire and there's no escape, there's no exit. And uh, she said one of the most terrifying things, she heard a voice like thunder behind her saying, what have you done? And Jesus had mercy and brought her out. And he said, you go tell people. Her husband wasn't saved. He, uh, he, he got saved right away. They got two churches now. They're all fired up and they go, they got one in the morning, they drive across town in the afternoon, they got one in the afternoon. And I pondered that, you know, and I thought, she's not lying. If she was lying, she'd go right back down to where she come from. Yes. And anyway, like Sergey said last week, is verified by two or three witnesses. We went to another place and uh, we're staying with a pastor there. He says, my elder has a story for you. He had the same story. Wow. That was the next stop. And he, a little different, he said, he worked for Pepsi Cola. He got sick and he died. And his body was in the morgue. And uh, he came back, he, he saw the same thing she saw. And uh, he came back to life in the morgue. And uh, they were running from him in the morgue. And then he went back to Pepsi and they went, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. And he's very much alive, and that church is alive. So I believe these things. And you know, I researched it. Uh, I took the Bible and I did a lot of research on hell. And you know, it brings the fear of the Lord upon you. We got saved, we're redeemed. What did we get saved from? The pit, mm -hmm. forever. It's, you know, some say, oh, it's just temporary. Some say you just die and all that. Or I've run into people that say, Oh, I'm going down where all my buddies are. We're going to party. They won't party down there. It's destruction forever and ever and ever. And you know, these things, when you do a research on hell, like I've had two books. I've had one, Mary Baxter uh, went down into hell, she said. I had that book, and there's another one, 23 Minutes in Hell. And we search these things with the Bible, not just the book, and they are real. And it gives us more uh, emphasis to pray for our loved ones. We don't want our loved ones to go. We don't want yes. our friends to go. Absolutely. And when persecution comes, you know what you've been redeemed from. We thank Jesus for our redemption, for yes. his blood. We're washed in the blood of the lamb. Absolutely. And we've got the, like Sergei says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Amen. We've got to keep Amen. that joy. When persecution comes, we have to stand. And having done all to stand, we stand. Amen? Amen. So God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Don't forget, who said that the joy of the Lord is our strength? The governor. The governor, not a priest. The governor, the politician. Nehemiah was his name. Remember that? And I just wanted also to bring to you a glimpse of Jesus' time. A glimpse of Jesus' time. It is the song, there will be two songs. First one is called Kumi Ori, the rise and shine. It's about God's light. The rise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen of you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the peoples, but the Lord shall rise on you, and his glory shall be seen.
good service here, Jay. I really like to hear the individual people instead of Bible stories. Praise <laughs> God.